hey, our prophet touched children. Let's try and justify it, the video. And we have to realize that we should think about the questions themselves and where they're emanating from, and perhaps the questions themselves are flawed. And I want to give you just one simple example that the right always uses, Islamophobes always use. I like that we're dropped right into the middle of a talk on Islam with zero context and the best b-roll footage they could muster up is a destroyed Viking ship. Because when I think Islam, I think Nordic seamen. <laughs> uh, I also want to point out that uh, he used the word Islamophobe, which is a word I really, I really don't like because it's so freely used to describe people that like criticize, question, or just they're just otherwise skeptical of the religion. Uh, I suppose that also makes me a Trump phobe, a canned spinach phobe, and being Hugo's bottom phobe. You said you liked it. He would tear me. I'm very brittle down there. I'm not even big. He's just that thin-skinned around the anus. Uh, and they make a very big deal of it. And that is, they say, for example, oh, uh, your, your prophet astaghfirullah was, and they use a very vulgar word. Pedophile. The word is pedophile. And you can use that word because regardless of the social connotations involved, the definition of pedophile is simply a person who is sexually attracted to children. I mean, a nine-year-old is definitely a child, even if it's legal for them to be married in a culture. So yeah, Muhammad was definitely a pedo. Lucky for him, you didn't need a white van, a puppy, and a bag of candy to catch them. They're pretty damn elusive now. They're adapting. Uh, interested in young people, and I don't want to use the word out of respect for the Prophet because the age of Aisha was a uh, young age. It was nine years old in the Sahih Bukhari hadith, okay? She was nine years old according to hadith of Bukhari. And just to be clear, her age was six when Muhammad married her. Nine was when he penetrated her with his 56-year-old penis repeatedly until he came inside of her prepupescent vagina. We're just going to let that sit there for a bit in your head. Yeah. I had to write that. Yeah. <laughs> and so they use a very vulgar word. And I've had young men and women come to me, Muslims, and they say, how can we accept this? This is something that is vulgar. It's unethical. I can't believe that a prophet would do this. So Muslims come to you and the big problem they have with Muhammad wasn't the warlording or the murder or any of the non-murder violence. It was that he fucked a kid? I mean, if you can excuse the other shit, wh why not this? Now is probably a good time to talk about a little practice known as Bakabazi. Hugo, are you aware of Bakabazi? I think so. I think I know what you're going to talk about. Does it involve young boys? It sure does. Bakabazi literally translates in Persian to boy play or playing with boys. This is a custom in many Arab and Muslim nations in which a group of men will take a young boy or boys, dress them like girls, makeup and all, and then make them dance. Now this doesn't sound too bad. This sounds like my kind of party. Although I would I would bring up the age of the dancing people. Young people just are not as good as older people at dancing. Take uh, Justin Timberlake for example. He is improved. But in this culture, in Bakabazi, when they're done dancing... The men, well, well, the men fuck the kids. And this still is going on, and while in some areas it's technically against the law, like in Afghanistan, for instance, these laws are rarely enforced, especially because the practice is typical among more powerful members in the community. So, like, the shit with fucking kids is in your culture's backbone, guys. Now, this person, and this is a classic example, this question is emanating from a particular mind, coming from a particular culture, of a particular generation, and a particular time, and a particular place. Yes, one where we recognize it is not okay to force yourself on a child for sexual pleasure, whether by force or position of authority. You are correct. The worst enemies of the Prophet ﷺ, who smeared him with everything imaginable. They couldn't even think of this as a flaw. Oh, fucking kids is a flaw, all right. So is making up a religion and then murdering people based upon the shit you wrote down. But, but fucking kids too. Why? Because cultures vary. Practices vary. And it's not just Islamic or Arab culture. The reality is, 
500, 1,000 years ago, the world over, people were marrying at younger ages. Come on, guys, Hitler wasn't such a bad guy. In 1940s Germany, killing Jews was all the rage. Everyone and their grandmother was doing it. You go down to the corner store, get some penny candy and Zyklon B, and you have a whole weekend full of fun ahead of you. <laughs> Crystal knocked was funny. Why? Because the lifespan was shorter, and young kids became mature faster. A nine-year-old of... Uh, uh, 1400 years ago is like a 16, 17 year old intellectually and biologically of our times. Yeah, lifespans were shorter, but from all sources I could look up, it seems the reverse is true in regards to puberty. So it seems, and, and this is a shocker, that puberty is closely linked with diet and weight. Studies show that after industrialization, that is, the Industrial Revolution and subsequent simplifying of mass produced foods, puberty began to set in earlier. Now, if you're going to argue with me that a desert-dwelling culture such as this had similar nutritional standards to a modern person, you're probably just making excuses to fuck kids. Also, are you out of your fucking mind? A nine-year-old today, especially a girl, is vastly more intelligent than their ancient counterparts because of education and overall access to information. Also, your argument for people getting married younger due to shorter lifespans sort of falls apart when you mention we aren't talking about two nine-year-olds, we're talking a nine-year-old and a 53-year-old man. A gross, beardy, desert man. He invented a whole religion before she was able to stop shitting her pants. So when we say nine, we are back projecting our nine-year-old of uh, 2014, you know, Detroit. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I was not getting hand jobs in fourth grade, but man, high school was awesome for that. Maybe I just wasn't a very sexy nine-year-old, though. Imagining a nine-year-old girl and then back projecting that into Medina and saying, oh, how could our process and marry somebody that's nine? See, this is a cultural bias. If not wanting grandparent age people to have the ability to fuck people who is aged in the single digits is cultural bias, then fuck cultural subjectivity. This is the same type of argument that modern Christians use when we bring up slavery in the Bible. Oh, that's just cultural differences, implying somehow that God is changing his mind all the time about whether or not it's cool to fuck kids or enslave people. You think one time God was like, you know, you can fuck kids, but only missionary, and now it's like you can't fuck kids at all? Was it a position thing? I don't, I don't think it was. I think you just shouldn't fuck kids. Also, they're probably bad at sex. Go do the research. In some states to this day, I'm from one of them, Tennessee, you can marry people at the age of 14 or 15, right? It's not magical the age of 18. Again, typically, this would be someone closer to your age, not someone over five times older than you. And I, I looked this up. Uh, here is the law from the Nashville Clerk Office website. Quote, if either party is under the age of 18, they must be accompanied by his or her parents. Tennessee law does not permit those under the age of 16 to marry without a court order. The fee for marriage licenses is $99.50. So only 10 times older than Aisha. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, the average age of getting married was in your teen. Uh, 500 even more so, Romeo and Juliet. When Romeo and Juliet was written, do you know the age of Romeo and Juliet in the Shakespeare's play? Romeo and Juliet are supposed to be 14 and 13 years old. And that turned out great, right guys? Also, hate to harp on this, but neither Romeo or Juliet were 53-year-old men with multiple wives. Just putting it out there. And that's why they had 14 and 13-year-old actors play Romeo and Juliet. Now, in our times, if Romeo and Juliet were 14 and 13, they'd go to, to, to jail for, for pedophilia or something like this, right? No, 13 and 14-year-olds can fuck the literal shit out of each other, legally. Like all sorts of awkward blowjobs with way too much teeth and teenage boys that come in their pants too soon. That's not pedophilia, that's just two kids fucking each other. For pedophilia? Okay, now I think you weren't saying pedophile not because it's insulting to Muhammad, I just don't think you know how to pronounce it. You don't, but look, when Shakespeare's writing, and Shakespeare's only 500 years ago, Romeo and Juliet are supposed to be 14 and 13 because of his era, 14 and 13 is like our era, 18 and 17. Okay, so Muhammad is less like a 9-year-old fucking a 53-year-old man and more like a 15-year-old fucking a 78-year-old cryptkeeper-looking motherfucker. 
If this is something 500 years ago, and subhanAllah, not even 500, again, go look back in this country, in this country, in the 1800s, early 1900s, the average age of marriage was uh, early 20s to teens. In this country. <laughs> and if I know anything about American history, we made no mistakes along the way. Yeah, and, and the average life expectancy was like 50. So these people were middle-aged. And this is in America. In many other countries to this day, the age of marriage is still much younger. And I don't mind telling you this. My own grandmother, and she was born in British India, my own grandmother got married at the age of 14. Yes, because British India is widely known for having acceptable marriage practices. Their marriage practices are only second to their forward-thinking, shitting-in-the-streets policies. So for us to be so gung-ho, so passionate, how could our Prophet have done this? Subhanallah. Yeah, because the Prophet of a major religion should be a better person than rapey Uncle Dwayne. Who should we blame first, our own intellect or the seerah of the Prophet Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and blame the rapist. Definitely blame the guy who raped a nine-year-old whose whole life he was in control of. Yeah, like, I'm not even hesitating here. Fuck that guy. And of course, this leads us to the issue of how do we respond to these charges. And there are many Muslims, they just don't understand and they buckle under the pressure and they start, you know, figuring out, well, Aisha was actually 18. Very convenient because 18 is the age of marriage here. So I've, I've never actually had a Muslim claim to me that Aisha was actually 18, but I do like that this guy is aware that apologists for his religion try to, try to fuck with numbers in order to successfully navigate the mental gymnastics necessary to justify fucking a person that isn't even allowed to ride the fucking tilt-a-whirl at the county fair. I'm pretty sure 100 years from now when the age is raised to 1920, all that automatically Aisha's age will miraculously rise up to 1920. That's not the way to answer these questions. I don't care if the age of consent is 98 years old. Don't fuck nine-year-olds. Just don't. No fucky the children. No touch. Aisha never complained. She was the happiest wife in the world. She loved the, the marriage of the process. She loved the process. She's not angry. She's not complaining. That's pretty easy to do when you live in a society that lets your husband beat and rape you whenever he wants. Being happy is not voluntary in that situation. Well, yeah. Have you seen what Muslim men do to people that disagree with them? I'm pretty sure Aisha valued her head enough to give head to some old guy for a few years. Also, I mean, like, she's dead now, but... okay. <laughs> this is a 1,400-year-old culture. Now, nobody's saying we need to resurrect that in our times, and I don't have any problem as a faqih, as a theologian, as an imam to say, okay, in our age, a nine-year-old girl does not qualify to get married. We have to wait till she's older. No problem. Many ulama are saying that. Oh, many are saying that. But some are still trying to stick their dicks in something that's been around for less time than how I met your mother. Barney would not approve. Why then? Why is it not okay now? Legit question. If you think it was okay for Muhammad, then why is it wrong today? Is it possible that as a society we have come to recognize the importance of consent and how fucked up fucking kids is? It's not that something was moral and became immoral over time. It's that over time we culturally came to the understanding that it's fucking wrong and it has always been wrong and harmful to the people these cultural norms affected. Don't fuck kids now. Please don't do it a thousand years ago. Could you get away with it? Sure. Was the kid liking it? Maybe. I don't know the kid, but you shouldn't do it. But for us to feel this complex, and then we have young people coming up to us, how could Islam allow X? Why does the Quran say Y? Take a step back and ask yourself, why am I asking this question? Where is this question emanating from? Perhaps my own understanding should be questioned before uh, questioning the Quran and Sunnah. No, actually this question is emanating from wherever the human decency part of my brain is. I think it's the frontal lobe. I know it's nowhere near my dick. And you know what? Maybe you shouldn't be making excuses for an asshole cult leader who took tons of wives and raped a nine-year-old girl repeatedly throughout her life. But maybe that's just my subjective cultural norms I'm projecting onto you. The end. This felt like a Nambla video. Yeah. Eh. So yeah. Uh, Muhammad, definitely a pedophile. You could literally not make any argument. Once you admit to me he had sex with a nine-year-old, there is no words that could come out of your mouth that would undo that. You can't reseal that. It's like a can of Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. Much like Muhammad's nine-year-old wife.
so yeah, that's all kinds of fucked up. Uh, don't fuck kids, I guess is the moral of this episode.